the beginning of a new year, so that means a surplus of things. Everybody has new resolutions, everybody has their Goodreads reading challenge everywhere. We all have different reading goals. We're going book shopping, you're seeing the yearly wrap-ups, you're seeing the 24 books that you wanna read in 2024. I mean, there's literally so much that is happening at the beginning of this year. But to me, some of the most important things that I see are people's best books of 2024. The Goodreads Choice List, the Barnes Noble Book of the Year, the New York Times, the Amazon Top List. I love seeing what books are the most widely loved to come out of a year. I just named a lot of the different ways that you can technically measure what were truly the best books of a certain year. You can go look at top lists, you can go search and scour the internet for what people are personally saying are their favorite books, what were the most hype books out of the year most widely talked about, it's kind of the same thing. I feel like I'm trying to reach a word count on an essay right now. You can do all of these things or you can do what I did to prepare for this video and do literally every single one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> The amount of hours that I spent scouring top lists, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, like so many different forms to find the most talked about and most widely loved books of 2023. It's kind of insane. Now, I will say this. At first, it was not going to be multiple platforms. I was just going to look up the best books of 2023 on YouTube and just kind of scour all of those videos and just take tallies and see what those results were looking like. And after watching literal hours of these videos, I came to a fast conclusion that I had pretty much read all of the most talked about books. I literally tallied up everything and I had read all of the books that were the most talked about. Let's rewind a little bit and break down exactly what I was looking for within my research. So I was looking at multiple different genres. I'm looking for the best fantasy book, fiction book, romance book, young adult book, nonfiction book, and thriller book. Those are the genres that I am personally testing out and looking for. So after going through and watching these videos on YouTube, and I literally had my iPad next to me tallying up and writing down every single book name. I quickly realized that about 90% of everything I had already read. Here is the data from my booktube search and also shout out to all of the YouTubers that I scoured through all of your guys' videos to use for this purpose. Thank you so much for uploading these videos so I can have this video. So for fantasy, both Serpent Wings of Night and Fourth Wing tied with five mentions. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and Tress of Emerald Sea tied for the most talked about with three votes. A Study in Drowning was two and Heavenly Bodies also had two. Young Adult Divine Rivals was the absolute winner with six and then we had Once Upon a Broken Heart with four. The Natural Series with three. Renegades with two. Powerless with two and If He Had Been With Me with two. Then we go on to romance. Magnolia Parks series was the clear winner with eight mentions, but then we go quickly on to yours truly with seven mentions. Also the seven year slip with seven mentions, which I thought was kind of funny. Then we have love theoretically with three, the right move with two, you again with two, the love wager with two, things we left behind with three, the chestnut spring series with five, the boys of Tom and series with three, love redesigned with two, happy place with four, win in Rome with three, and part of your world with four. Then going into fiction, we have the winner of this one was Yellowface with three votes. Then we go into If You're Villains and the Unmaking of June Pharaoh. Carrie Soto is back in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. All had three mentions. All had two mentions. <laughs> My bad. Um, and then with Thriller, we have None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell was the clear winner with five mentions. Bright Young Women with two. The Writing Retreat with two. The Only One Left with three. And Never Lie with two. So as you can see, basically for all of the winners, except for fiction, I had read every single book mentioned other than A Study in Drowning, Trust of the Enrolled Sea, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia, Fairies, and Heavenly Body. Pretty sure in like some of the fiction books, I had read all of these. So I was like, you know what? This, this research is just not conclusive enough for me. And this is when I had the bright idea to just go across all of my socials. This was actually going to be better in the long run because I feel like you get so many different people in like a whole entire different pool of genres and books that you've never heard of before. And I actually found a lot of recommendations that outside of this video of books that I wanna read that I added to like a list of books that I wanna buy. 
Needless to say, this was just kind of a good thing to do all in all. And also something that I thought was going to be good is that scouring Bookstagram and BookTok, there is so much content. Like I feel like there is so much more content than there, are, than there is on YouTube that you can just kind of swipe through. So I thought that this would be a little bit easier. So it was back to the screen to get my research. And since I was spending a lot of time looking at screens, I definitely had on my glasses from Pear Eyewear, which is the kind sponsor of today's video. So thank you so much to Pear Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. You guys know by now that I love them so much. You're either seeing me wear these glasses or I'm wearing these, okay? You're always seeing me wear one of the two. Usually it's these, I absolutely love these. But I got some new top frames for these. But first I wanna tell you guys all about Pear Eyewear. They are so affordable. They have prescription glasses or I use blue light glasses. Basically you can just go on the website and they have so many different base style frames for you to choose from and to make it even easier they have a virtual try on tool where you can put your camera on and see every single style on your face that way you can see which style fits you the best which actually is really good because the worst part I feel about going and having to get like new glasses is going into the store like no one wants to do it no one wants to go into the store and then feel that pressure of someone like breathing down your neck as you're trying to look for glasses but pair makes it so simple and easy for you guys and the best part about it is is that you can personalize so much with pair with their top frames first of all if you guys don't know these are top frame so after you pick your base frame you look at the style you go to the top frames and there are literally so many different collections for you to choose from and you just pick the name of the base frame and you pick the top frames that go with it because you have these okay you have these on and then you're like oh, I, I wish I had a little bit more like personality to add to them add in the top frames I'm going to put the names of everything style glasses that I'm wearing and the top frames down below but this one specifically is the romantic reads put these on guys are you joking they have the little book I'm gonna put these up for a close-up so you guys can see a little bit better you're joking like you're actually kidding this is like a book lover's dream we also have these blue ones that are just so fancy looking and they're so aesthetic and beautiful like look how easy and then when you want to take them off boom when you're in strictly business mode when you're wanting to do personality party mode there they are. We also have these, which I feel like go with the trends right now. Are you kidding? You guys know that you were seeing the bows everywhere. So we have them on the glasses. And you guys know, like literally you guys know that I wear these all the time. So you literally see, you literally see showcase to you in basically every single video that I'm always wearing a pair of these because they are absolutely amazing. And obviously I always am wearing my pair of glasses, whether that's me reading on my Kindle, editing my videos. I'm literally just always wearing them no matter what. And to have this little like reading book collection that's so personal to me means so much. So you guys should go grab your own pair of pair eyewear now. You guys can actually click the link down in my description to get 50 15% off your first pair at Pear Eyewear. If you use my code DESREADING15, I'm going to have all that up on the screen and it's going to be down in the description. And now I can slay with my reading glasses and my cute little romance read lenses and my little bows and it's going to be so cute. So thank you so much again, Pear, for helping me out through this whole entire reading process. So back to the data. So for Bookstagram, I decided to turn to one of my most reliable resources for this type of information. You guys, subtle plug, if you guys aren't following my bookstagram specifically, but I have another Instagram. If you guys wanna be, you know, involved in this. I turned to you guys and I asked you guys what your favorite books of 2023 were. Now, I don't know if you guys knew that you were part of a video, but you were, so let's go on to the data that I got. I went through pretty much, I think, all responses. Starting off with fantasy, Akatar 1 with 36 mentions, and then we go on to Fourth Wing with 33 mentions, and then the Throne of Glass series with 29 mentions. Crescent City had five, Project Hail Mary had two. So the obvious winners in these categories were Akatar, Throne of Glass, and Fourth Wing. But once we looked at it from a smaller scale, the other ones that stepped out were Crescent City and One Dark Window. Then we go on to romance. So again, we have Magnolia Park's High with Happy Place with both having 24. Seven Year Slip had 14. Yours Truly had eight. Butcher and Blackbird had four. Love Theoretically had six. Chestnut Spring Series had 10. Icebreaker had six. Say You Swear had four. Beach Read had five. Book Lovers had three. Twisted Series had two. Love and Other Words had five. My Fault had two. The Right Move had nine. Things We Live Unfinished had one. Addicted Series had two. Called Up had one. I Fell in Love with Hope had one. The Love Wager had one. Knock Em Out Series had three. Yeah, that was the 
research and as I have been saying I read basically every single one of those books so the research it was looking a little disappointing up until this point then we went to fiction and the winner in fiction was actually a tie between Carrie Soto and Daisy Jones with six a little life had four Malibu Rising had three alone with you in the ether had three yellow face had three the great alone had two with thrillers the housemate had two then we just had honorable mentions with the maidens the last mrs. Parrish Thursday night murder clubs or the night and the perfect marriage all having one and then we go into nonfiction. had none young adult our winner for young adult was yet again divine rival with 32 votes powerless was a close second with 27 once upon a broken heart had 18 shatter me had six five survive had three dance of thieves had five a good girl's guide murder had 16 the inheritance games had three the naturals had eight better than the movies had 11 six of crows had four cruel prince had five betting on you had three renegades had two the way i used to be had two the grace here had two if he had been with me had two and then the do-over prison Healer, Bella, Donna, The Summer I Turned Pretty, Legend Born, Anna and the French Kiss, and A Thousand Boy Kisses all had one. Yet again, we were faced with the fact that after going through all of this, I still had basically read all of the winners. So we were going to like 10th place for these things. I had to go to TikTok. I spent hours scrolling through different hashtags, different videos to try to get some conclusive research on what people thought that their best books of 2023 were. So here was the data from Book Talk, starting with fantasy. The winners from TikTok, Fourth Wing <laughs> with eight, Crowns of Nixia with seven, and One Dark Window with seven. And then we go into House on the Cerulean Sea had five, Project Hail Mary had two, Akatar had 13, Throne of Glass had 10, Blood and Ash had two, Invisible Life of the Rue had three, One from Enemy had two, Vicious had three, and The Final Empire had three. I don't know why I said fourth wing one. Akatar won, then Throne of Glass, then fourth wing one, and then Crowns of Nixia and One Dark Window. One Dark Window, I found out, was very widely loved. On TikTok, the winner of romance was Happy Place with eight. Magnolia Park series came in second place with seven votes. Then the seven year slip had six. Yours Truly had three. Archer's Voice had three. Addicted series had four. Boys of Tommen had five. Love Theoretically had three. Then we go on to fiction. Yellowface had three. The Great Alone had three. Remarkable Bright Creatures had two. A Man Called Ove had two. Daisy Jones had two. Tom Lake had two. Alone With You in the Ether had two. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow had five. Rogue had two. My Husband had two. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo had two. And Malibu Rising had two. By this point, I definitely had my fiction book locked in because there was a clear winner between every single piece of information that I was gathering across the internet. But then we go into thrillers. So the winner for thrillers were was Bright Young Women. Then we had Confessions with two, Razorblade Tears with two, The Housemaid with two, The Housemaid Secret with two, The Push with two, Pretty Girls with one, No Exit with one, The Perfect Child with one, Next of Kin with one, The September House with one, The Last Word with one, Devil and Silver Pearl, Then She Was Gone, Look Closer, Small Mercies, The Reformatory, All Sanders Bleed, and Writing Retreat, all having one. To go into young adult, it is looking like Divine Rivals again took over the young adult genre with 11 votes. Once Upon a Bro Broken Heart came in with nine. Dance of Thieves had four. Cruel Prince had three. Legendborn had four. Powerless had seven. Six of Crows had two. Carval had three. Good Girls Guide to Murder had two. Shatter Me had two. And then Promise Boys, The Way to Blood, Sun Kiss, Better Than the Movies, the Thousand Boy Kisses, Belladonna, and Renegades all had one. And then to go into nonfiction, Educated had two. Glad My Mom Died had two. Cultish had one. Just Kids had one. Beautiful Boy had one. Nothing is Missing. The Mountain is You. I still, even after, across all of these, Really only fiction, I felt, had a clear winner. I thought that this still was not enough. It just still wasn't enough, no. So I decided to look at the Goodreads Choice winners. The Goodreads Choice winner was Yellowface. And this is the book that all across the board within the fiction, it won pretty much every single time that I took data for fiction. So this one was the clear winner and it was the only clear winner from literally any genre that I was looking at. So the winner of mystery and thriller was actually The Housemate's Secret. And here's what I was doing with this. I was looking to the Goodreads choices to compare it with the data that I had gotten. So, for example, Yellowface won, and it was also widely talked about across every single data that I got across all different social media platforms. So that one was a clear winner. But then when I went to the mystery and thrillers, yes, does this have 86,468 votes? 
but I didn't see it come up a whole lot across my research. And then once you look to second and third place, none of this is true and the only one left, I had already read those. And then third and fourth place, I hadn't seen anywhere across my research. But fifth place with 34,352 votes was Bright Young Women, which I had seen across my research. And then we were going to romance and the romance first place winner was Happy Place with 157,687 votes. This one was the most frustrating to look at because out of the, let's count, I had read 15 of the 20 that were on this list. First place, second place, third place, and fourth place, I had read all of those books and really, really enjoyed them. So I mean, you know, valid. But the next book up that I hadn't read that had 39,178 votes was Romantic Comedy. And I've been having that sitting on my TBR. And did I really see this go across the research? No but I added it to the list. So because with the romance one, the only results that I had kept on getting were books that I had read. So this was the only book that I had really come across that had a high volume amount of votes that I hadn't read yet. Which Goodreads does romantic and fantasy. I was just really looking at fantasy. So the first place winner was Hellbent. And I DNF'd that last year, so we weren't going into that. And then from what I understood, some of these other books that were on the list were like second books in a series. And also I just didn't really see these come up a lot. The one that was in fourth place that I had seen come up across the research was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So that went to my mind. We have Young Adult. They separated young adult into fantasy and fiction and I wasn't separating the two so we're just looking at young adult fiction and their number one pick was Check and Mate which was another DNF for me. And I was in the same boat with young adult where basically all of the research that I had done I had read all of the books for the most part. Third place for young adult was Five Survive by Harley Jackson which is another book that I had sitting there. With that being said I finally narrowed down the picks for today's video. First off, we're starting with the obvious choice for fiction, and the winner of that one was Yellow Face. This one is literally was the top, I think the top winner across basically every single platform that I had seen. So obviously the reviews speak for itself. Then we have Fantasy, and it, for me, this was between Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia and One Dark Window. However, I did go with the one that I already had on my physical TBR because I'm trying to shrink that if we didn't know. So I went with One Dark Window for the fantasy pick. Then for romance, we obviously had romantic comedy because again, I was in this boat with romance where I'd read most of them, but I actually picked two romances because also the love wager did pop up throughout my research. So I thought it was good to give that a fair chance since also it is on my physical TBR. Next for YA, we have Five Survive. I chose that because it was a Goodreads winner and it had a lot of votes. And again, it was on my physical TBR already. Nonfiction, I went with Educated. Then with Thriller, I did choose Bright Young Women because it was a good reach choice award you know, finalist and because it did come across as I was doing my research. So those are the books that you are going to watch me read in today's video and I'm going to put to the test if some of these books out of the greatest of 2023 are worth it because for pretty much the most part, the widely loved books of 2023 I've already read and really loved. So I feel like that has high hopes for these books. So finally, let's get into the reading for today's video. through this book right now and I have to say I am just so totally enamored with this book I can't put it down and when I do put it down I find myself looking up things like author interviews who I came across an interview where she said who her dream casting is in this book is just so like it's utterly captivating. Like, it actually is. Like, the storyline and the commentary on the publishing industry and even, like, the book community digest and review books and the way that the publishing company works and how we don't see, like, the ins and outs of that. Like, it's very much commentary, I feel, on the publishing industry as a whole and I 
kind of knew that already going in because I had seen one of the author's TikToks come across my For You page when I was looking up stuff about the book and she herself, I have watched interviews and stuff of her like speaking about the book. But something else that I'm enjoying is like the writing. This author is very much widely loved and this is like the first book that I've like, that I've actually been able to kind of like go through and I don't know if this is her voice for all of her books but I'm just really enjoying the writing in every single aspect of this book. I didn't know how much I was gonna like it going into it because I do feel like this book and some other ones are definitely like kind of stepping out of my comfort zone. But I feel like when I discover books like this, it's like you never, you never know what you're going to enjoy until you step outside of your comfort zone. And I am really enjoying it so far. It's a book that I have been thinking about. Like even when I like went to drive through at dinner, I was thinking about the book and I wanted to come back and read it. And I have just been slowly enjoying it, but I do want to finish it tonight. And I do think that I will be able to because it's just a book that you want to like sit down and just binge. <laughs> that okay guys last night i finished yellow face and i wanted to settle my thoughts for a little bit because something that i learned about myself is that i cannot rate a book like fresh after reading it i sat with my thoughts all night and i literally scoured like tiktok goodreads it was just one of those books where i just wanted to see as well like what other people were saying about it because obviously it was the goodreads choice winner for the year and then it was talked about all across social media and was literally the number one winner across every single platform that i researched so i was like obviously people really really love this book and i and one of those people that really, really enjoyed this book. It is so enamoring. Like I could not put this book down. And I will say one thing. If I had to describe the main character in one of many words, truly, it would be audacity. Because if this main character has one thing for sure, without a doubt, it is the audacity. I mean, this main character is actually like insane. It's just very crazy in the commentary on the publishing industry from an author and this and just seeing how the inside of the publishing company works and the just terrible parts of the publishing industry and how representation and also this book at some point made me like anxious angry sick to my stomach and just completely bewildered but i knew in my heart that that was the purpose like that was the emotions that the author was wanting to get you get out of you with the story so for that major major nods to this author i mean literally the writing the voice and everything in the story was so good it was just one of those books where i really did take a moment to notice the writing and how much i was really enjoying it i mean i was just this this book is just so enthralling, truly. And you were on the edge of your seat, but not on your edge of the seat in a way that like thrillers or sometimes fantasies leave you. It's like on the edge of your seat because you're like literally, what could this main character come up with next? Truly, what could she do? And I was just flipping through these pages and was just truly and utterly obsessed. The thing is though, I did feel like the pacing towards the end really fell off. And then all of a sudden, like I think for the last maybe like 20, pages we kind of go down this rabbit hole where if you guys really like watch closely in me like finishing the book the clip of me finishing it I was truly on the edge of my seat and I was like stressed like what is going on but in a good way but before that I would say maybe for the like 50 or so ish pages it kind of felt like uh the story was not like dragging but I was getting bored a little bit I feel like the pacing kind of fell off just right there in that part but it was so much so noticeable that I was kind of like okay I might want to put this down like maybe I'm not going to finish it but I just kind of like went through that and then got to the end that was just absolutely a whirlwind of emotions this main character you think 
from the beginning can't get more awful and just throughout the progression of the story gets more and more awful really really enjoy this book i'm giving this book a four stars again i think it would have been five star material if it didn't just kind of like fall off at that one part but i just really enjoyed the haunter time reading and i literally i know i really enjoyed a book when i like go and tell people in my life that I absolutely do not read about a book that i'm reading and i went downstairs this morning to tell my mom about this book because i just thought that it was so good the entire time i can see why this was an all across winner all across the board and if you guys haven't picked up this book yet i would really really recommend it even if literary fiction or fiction isn't your genre if you are a lover of books or somebody in the book community and book social media because there was also commentary on that within this book i think that it's a very educating thing to pick up and read across all boards i think that this is such a good book so you guys should go and read Yellow Face, four stars, a very, very strong book for me. On to the next. It's actually a whole entire day later. It's the next night and I finished this a few hours ago so I thought that it would be good to pick up like a light fluffy romance Especially after reading like more literary fiction type stories. So picking this one up I did really enjoy it. It is exactly what I just said a light fluffy romance I always applaud Lynn Painter for her ways of her craftsmanship of romance books every single book that I've ever read by her she writes it like just one of those heartwarming rom-coms that we all love so much if you're a romance reader when harry met sally you've got mail just all of the like tried and true i didn't want to make a loud noise so i felt like that was like awkward i had i had to address it but all of the tried and true rom-coms that we all throw on you know when you're feeling a little down or you just need comforted that's what her books feel like they just feel like a warm hug and kind of tuning into something that you just know is going to make you feel better something that i think that she does really well too is the chemistry and banter between characters truly her banter is some of the best that i enjoy because it gives that rom rom-com feeling of not like too cheesy but it's like just right where it squeezes your heart a little bit and just feels like a warm hug and I just really enjoy her books I always pick up one of her books just to have a light fluffy romance because I just feel like they are so enjoyable better than the movies is definitely still like my favorite book from her I haven't finished betting on you yet but this is my first uh, go at her adult like romance novels and I will say I think I do probably prefer her young adult books just because I feel like it's just so like so sweet her young adult books I did still really enjoy this I ended up rating it a three and a half is what I landed on with this one because I really liked the two characters and like I said I think that she does the banter really well between them of them having chemistry I just really felt it with them which I feel like for a long time in romances I haven't felt like actual chemistry between two people that is like palpable from reading it just off of words on a page I've honestly been kind of off of my romance kick for a little bit because all of them kind of feel the same but this one was just like a nice palette cleanser of a romance especially between different more heavier books and I just really enjoyed it for that it's not like a four or a five because I just didn't really care about the couple that much there was like this point in the book where the pacing started getting really weird like the first like not even 100 pages I was like wow we're like flying through time in this book and then it kind of got like stagnant a little bit and we kind of hit a conflict but then we got rid of it and of course you know what's going to come up later and then we go into the whole entire like this like fake dating plot line ploy rom-com thing the third act conflict comes in in the last like 10 pages and you just know it just felt like throwing a wrench in a situation and those few things just really threw off the book for me other than all of that though like those aren't even like really like critiques it's just like why it wasn't like a four or five i still really enjoyed this book and i found it to be very cute and i do recommend lynn painter for you know a lot of just palette cleanser light fluffy romance books i feel like she does it extremely well fun fact i did go to pick this up like earlier in 2023 
I picked this book up right after I read Happy Place and I really didn't know if it was because I had just read Happy Place and it's like obviously one of my favorite books of the year and I just wasn't liking this but I ended up you know three and a half it's a good book so on to the next. <laughs> The next book that we are starting for today's video, One Dark Window. This is one of the fantasy picks where I don't think this one was not on the Goodreads choice anywhere, but like all across TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, like people just kept on going on and on about this book. So I decided to pick it up because it's a book that I have sitting on the shelf. Like one of the stories that I tell around this book about me, like finding out about it was that I first saw like this cover when fourth wing started getting a type because somebody was like I love fourth wing this is my favorite fantasy of the year and everybody was like if you're putting this above fourth wing then it must be good and I've been seeing so many people talk about it so we're gonna put this to the test I'm actually reading it on my kindle and I think I'm 12% through it right now I actually picked this up for the first time I think in either November or December it may have been early I don't know those months that year's gone but yeah either november or december i picked this up and then i only read like eight percent of it i think i was like 12 percent last night but obviously we're gonna try to read and complete this book today and i mean i'm excited i think that this is described more as like a gothic fantasy i don't think it's very high stakes and anything like that from what i know the main character just kind of has like like i said not too sure but i'm gonna continue reading one dark window and see if you guys are right so far I don't see it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Truly, I cannot get into this book. A, I am not liking it because I don't feel that way. Like inside of myself, I don't feel that I'm like, oh, I don't like this book. I just think that maybe today, like specifically the mood I'm in, I may not be in the mood for like a fantasy, like trying to get into a world. Even though I feel like this book doesn't really have like tons of world building, I think it's just kind of like a medieval. I never know what time period to describe fantasy books in. Hey, because they're made up, I don't know. But it's like kingdoms and castles. But I just don't know because like, I just don't care. Like I keep on, I'll like read a few pages and then I'll be like, oh yeah, I should get to the end of this chapter. And then I'll like put it down. And then I'll start getting on my phone, which is making me feel like crap today. The cycle is truly never ending. So I don't know what to do. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to try to read through maybe like another chapter or two. And if I still don't really feel that in like captured by it, then I will put this book down and I'll try to read something else. Oh, the beginning of this video, I was really like, oh, I'm not in a reading slump. Like, I'm loving reading. And then I get to this book and I'm just like, am I in a reading slump? I really don't know why. I'm looking at the other books that I'm reading for this video and I'm like, I'm going to keep on trying to read this. I finally made it to like the 50% mark through this book. I updated my Goodreads. I'm pretty sure I'm 50% through. Y'all, I feel lied to. Like everybody, I even have looked this book up on TikTok, like non-spoiler stuff and nothing that I've seen has been spoiler. It's been like spoiler free review or the aesthetics. And sometimes I just have to look up stuff if I'm feeling a little unmotivated unmotivated this book is just not hitting for me i will say that the like tension that you feel of you know of the two characters not mad at it i'm not mad at it but i fear the storyline of this book is too simple to keep my attention like when you read fantasy i feel like either it's a good thing that the storyline is simple or it's kind of a bad thing that the storyline is simple and with this one i just feel like it's too you know, like I like the world that we're in and I really am enjoying like the two main characters and even some of the side characters. But my gosh, I just don't like this as much as everybody else does. And the pacing of this kind of feels slow, but then it doesn't feel slow. I am so conflicted with this book. Like it's not like I'm having a terrible time because I will say 
It kind of reminds me of when I was reading The Prison Healer, where a lot of people really liked that book, and I was getting told like how much people liked the book, and then when I looked up on TikTok, and I was like, yeah, I can't really get through this because it's super slow, everybody was like, the ending makes up for it. One, can we leave that behind? Telling somebody the ending is worth the book, you're telling me I have to get through 400 pages just to maybe like the end of it, but I didn't like anything else about it. That's how I felt about The Prison Healer, and I'm kind of feeling that way with this book. This is not what I expected. I want to also say this, because this happened to me with the Cruel Prince trilogy, but it didn't happen with this one, because I feel like I didn't know much about this one. But I do want to say this, is that romance is 100% like the sub- plot. It's not like a huge thing, at least not 50% into the book right now. This one isn't even political based. It's definitely just like plot line, like you're just following a plot. But you know what I mean. Like it's not like a romantasy, if that makes any sense. At least not in my opinion. And I've read my fair share of romantasy. Hello, I love Akatar. And that book is pretty much literally just romantasy. So this one is not. And like I said, I didn't go into it necessarily thinking it was romantasy. So it's not like I'm like, oh, this is not like just filled with romance. Ah. Like that's not how I'm feeling. It's just that I don't feel like the storyline is interesting enough to keep my attention throughout the book. I do want to, I literally am making my life's mission to finish it tonight though. I cannot put down this book and then expect myself to pick it back up because I think if I put this book down even just for the night, I would not pick it back up. Hello guys. Ooh, I don't know like what is shining on me. I didn't update last night, but I did in fact finish One Dark Window last night and I feel lied to a hundred percent. Every TikTok I looked up, even I saw, I came across somebody that was like, man, like I cannot get through this. Like I'm hundred pages in and everybody in the comments was like, please keep pushing through. And even the creator was like, I did push through and like, I loved it so much. Why don't I feel that way? Because I just feel so indifferent about it. Like, I don't think that this book is bad, but it's not like a four star or above for me. I ended up rating this book a three star because the romance that came in at the like very end of the book, it did eat. I do want to read the like second book in the little duology because I am now interested in like where that is gonna go. Before you go into this, like don't go into the thinking that this is a romance because it's not. I feel like you will be disappointed if you go in thinking that because definitely the romance is like not really even the subplot in this book. I will say though, like that is not my complaint. It is that the actual storyline was not like interesting enough to like keep me like gripped to the book. It's not high stakes and Honestly, I would recommend this because the magic system is very simple and easy. So I feel like it's a fantasy book that pretty much anybody could pick up because it's just about these like magic cards in a kingdom, essentially. So it's pretty simple to understand, but I almost feel like the storyline in this book is just a little bit too simple to where it's not interesting enough to keep my attention. There were parts of this book, however, that I was like very interested in and I was having a good time reading. So that's why I'm rating it at three stars. And like I said, I do now want to go into the second book. I will say like I feel like some of the plot twists I wouldn't even call them plot twists just like some things that get revealed I did guess it was pretty obvious to me but I still did enjoy the book it's just not as much as I thought I did and I feel like sometimes that also does really hurt a rating because it's not that I didn't enjoy my time but I feel like the preconceived thoughts that I had for the book since everybody was hyping this book up and everybody was talking about it damages the book. I mean, it's a double-edged sword because it's like you want to talk about your favorite books, you want people to read them and not everybody's going to love it as much as you do. So it's kind of like a, you know, the hype of a book can really affect the book. And it didn't have any hype. I wouldn't feel as strongly about like not loving it as much as I do, you know, which I'm not having that affect the writing because it like that's not something that that's not this book's fault that there is a preconceived hype around it for my own personal thoughts if any of that makes any sense anyway moving on let's pick up our next book the next book that we have is a book that I honestly I mean like I have really wanted to read this book it's I can't tell you how many times it's been on a monthly TBR that is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. If you guys don't know, this is the infamous author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. You guys know what it means when I take the dust jacket off of a book. This is her new like young adult mystery. Would you call this a thriller? I guess I'll know when I start reading. These like high school kids going on a road trip and then their car breaks down. And I think there's like a type of situation where they're in danger and only five are gonna survive the situation. This was a Goodreads, right? This was a Goodreads choice. 
I'm already forgetting my own research. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is like one of definitely, it's pretty high up there in books that I've read. It was a very engaging series and I feel like it was very well written especially in the YA genre and it was one of those really fast reads so I'm interested to see how another book does by the same author. Follow me. And 20% through Five Survive right now. Literally exactly 20% because I just updated it on my Goodreads. You guys follow me on my Goodreads which it's always down below if you are interested in following me over on my Goodreads. I keep on getting comments because I love using my Goodreads, but then like when I'm filming videos like this, I update my Goodreads, but then I never let you guys know like when I finish a book and the rating until the video is already out. I don't know because some part of me feels like if I put the rating out there, then you guys don't care. I don't know. I technically on Goodreads, I'm in the middle of like eight books right now and I haven't said that I've finished them. So every single book that I keep adding to the, like currently reading, everybody's like, how are you reading so many books at once right now? Like what, what, what is going on inside of your brain? Nothing. First impressions is that the way that this book is written is kind of peculiar. The main character, like the way she's talking and her inner like thoughts are just kind of sporadic. That's not like a negative thing. It's just like I have had to like get used to the way that it's written. Like she's very all over the place and I'm sure that this is like extremely intentional and I will figure out why. But that's just like writing you used to. It's almost like when you start Shatter Me and then there's like the crossed out text and you're just kind of like, what is, what's going on here? I did look it up on TikTok, like non-spoiler, and people like love, 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 love this book. In like a very distracted mood. So I'm putting on a Reading 5 Survive playlist on Spotify and I am just going to focus on trying to get through this book. on this. I'll let you guys know right now what I think of this. I finished Five Survive by Hall. <sighs> Might as well pick up my dignity while I'm at it. Finished this. That was genuinely Holly Jackson really sometimes toes that line of like you read her books and you're like wow she really went there in a young adult book it's not even like that these things are like super extreme it's just that you really would not expect these things to be like happening in a young adult book and then she just goes there she somehow still always writes about more like thrilling topics or like jaw-dropping moments but in a way that it still feels young adult you know what i mean like i remember when i read a good girl's guide to murder and then i was like wow like some of the stuff that she has like made happen in this book is like extreme for some young adult book you know that's what i love about her okay that's what i love she really pushes those boundaries the ending of this book had me on the floor oh but then i got that same feeling that i did from the final book in a good girl's guide to murder and it seems like she loves to do this. It seems like she loves to do this kind of in the book on a question mark. Questions are answered, but there's just one little thing. There's just one little thing that she leaves kind of like dangling in front of you that you're just gonna like keep up at night. Literally, the ending of the third Good Girl's Guide to Murder book, sometimes I do just lay up at night and I think about the way that book ended. And it's not even like, a, oh, I'm just in all about that book ended. It's more an annoyance. I love Holly Jackson. It's more an annoyance because it's like you pretty much close off everything else and then there's just this one thing, this one little thing that you just can't get out of your brain. But I guess that's also very, you know, purposeful. The ending of this book, I mean, you guys saw it. It had me, I was literally like 
flabbergasted to go back on an earlier clip where I'm discussing the writing and how I said I'm guaranteeing this is very purposeful I actually appreciated like the way that this was written like in the main character's mind of how it was a little bit sporadic and kind of like all over the place because this is a traumatized main character who has been through something that's extremely traumatizing you're just kind of like wow i get the sporadicness of her thoughts why certain things catch her attention or why certain things are going on i will say though like the storyline was like outlandish a little bit not even the storyline it's like the stuff that the twists and turns were based off of if you've read the book you may get what i mean when i say that anyway i know that's probably annoying to hear but I, i'm not trying to spoil anything for you guys in the end this was literally a page turner. I mean, I was trying to, I got through what, like if I got 20% into the book and I literally sat in this chair and did not get up once and finished it. And I mean, I probably started reading it at like seven something and it's, I finished it around like 920. Like I could, I did not get up from this chair. That being said, the official rating for this book is a four and a half stars. Now you guys may be like, Dusty, you literally just went on and on about like how much you really, really liked the book. There were moments, the, the thing that just knocked it off half a star was just that sometimes we went into such detail for like three to four pages. For example, say it's like, oh, we're going to like place this thing out here and you're going to run around the side of this and that's what we're going to do. We would then go into detail for like three to four pages on like how we're going to do a simple plan and it would just get over analyzing detail and even if that happens like once or twice in a book it really doesn't do anything like it doesn't like irk me in a way but when it's like a reoccurring thing that keeps happening i'm like okay we at this point there's like so many pages of just going into such intense detail and it's not even like we're going into intense detail because it's going to matter later on down the road it didn't really matter but that being said i still did really love this book this is such a strong standalone we have another book down this would have been appropriate if it was the fifth book that i finished for today's video but it's the fourth fourth book finished let's go on to our next one I actually listen to this as an audiobook because I love, specifically with memoirs, I love listening to audiobooks to get the story. And this audiobook was amazing. Um, I think it was Julie, Julia Whelan, who is like, she's like a pretty famous audiobook person. And I think she's the author of Thank You for Listening. But this was a great audiobook. But wow, this memoir had me so so intrigued it had a hundred percent of my attention and with whether i was at the gym in the car in my room doing anything i was constantly wanting to like listen to the audiobook because this story is such an important one i feel like sometimes education can be taken for granted and then after listening to this audiobook about how the author tara westover didn't have an education growing up she had no education she wasn't even really homeschooled and she decides to go to college and she's like wonderful like she literally like goes to cambridge she goes to harvard like all of these different things happening in her life but also it's talking about growing up in her like mormon family in utah i'm pretty sure and kind of like how her family and the family dynamics affected her and how ha not having a proper education affected her life the story was enrapturing i mean it was just so like the there were so many points in the story where I was like, I cannot believe this is real life. Like, I cannot believe that she has went through these things and that she has accomplished the things that she's accomplished. Like, it was genuinely mind-blowing. The most outstanding way imaginable. But what I just really loved about this book was just even when talking about family, everything went back to education and just how education is the backbone for a lot of things and what happens like when you're not educated and just how important it is just genuinely to have an education. You know a book is good when I literally go downstairs and I tell my family, like whoever's downstairs, I'm like, hey, I have to tell you about this book, by the way. Like this story is just absolutely insane. It was so good. And also the cover of this book, like when you read the story and then I was looking at the cover and I was like, wow, like even this cover is magnificent. I think that this is the best memoir that I have ever read in my life and I think that everybody needs to pick this up you know I mean it has like so many different like it's critically acclaimed I mean I see so many people talk about it but now I know why after reading it and now I want you guys to read it because this is literally the best memoir that I have ever read now on to the next book <sighs> oh 
okay guys it's been some days since i've last picked up a book for this video so now i am reading bright young women and on top of everything else it says that this book is actually a part of the 100 notable books of 2023 so i have to be honest with you guys i did start this book back in oct no not october november november december ish i don't know like 30 or more pages into the book and it, it really wasn't grabbing my attention i was actually very confused like i kept on rereading and rereading and i don't know if it's the voice of this book that's like confusing me kind of a little confusing and i have been trying to like slowly but surely get through it and it's just not working i'm trying to like find the spot that i'm at in the book and I can't find it. Okay, I do have a physical copy of the book. I, I'm not very far into it. Okay, yeah. I'm on page 40. I'm honestly so lost right now, guys. I don't even understand where I'm at in any of the copies of this book. So we're reading this right now. It's just a little hard for me to get into at the moment. Like everybody talks about how good it is. And I really, really like the concept of the book. But I'm just having a hard time like getting into it. I have my first dnf of the year first dnf of the year goes to this book no i can't i have gotten like about 55 percent through it and it literally has not picked up at all this book is incredibly mundane and does not interest me the writing style is a little peculiar and sometimes i really do like different writing styles and there are some quotes in this book that i like like it's not like the her writing is bad it's the style in which she decides to go into her writing in this book that's hard for me to digest you know like all of that feeds into the dnf of this because it's just not great to me i don't have any want to continue it and i'm not gonna waste my time on it so first dnf of the year best books of 2023 definitely not this one i will say though i was like, when this book started off i was pretty intrigued like within the first like two chapters i say chapters but it's like split up within the chapters it, weird the story is structured weirdly but like when the book first started off i thought okay wow this is very interesting and then i quickly lost that we're done with this one on to the next book for today's video hopefully it is better than this <laughs> The next book that we're reading is going to be Romantic Comedy. This was up for like Goodreads Choice Awards and everything in romance. The thing is, is that I didn't even know that this was like a romance. I thought that this was like a literary fiction. So let's see. I know that this is about the main woman in this book is like a comedy writer for what is essentially SNL. I mean, it looks like a more shorter styled book and we'll see. It looks like this has long chapters. The fact that this book... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the fact that this book opens with you should not i read many times reach for your phone first thing in the morning the new social media emails all disrupt the natural stages of waking and create stress the reason that this is sending me is because i have been non-stop yapping about how my one of my new year's goals is to like really not even try to get on my phone until 10 a.m and like this book just kind of checks me oh uh, no i am 11 percent into this book <laughs> Oh. oh, and I am not liking it at all. Every single character somehow in this book is extremely unlikable to like the tens. I genuinely don't know if I can do this. I might try to get myself through chapter one. Oh, by the way, this book has three chapters. I might try to get myself through chapter one and then see what I feel. But if we have two DNFs in this video, Hey, not my problem. Mm -hmm. 